Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm a neurologist who loves making videos about the brain. I also like to make videos that review supplements that affect the brain. So today we're going to explore St. John's wort. St. John's wort is a popular supplement that's used to manage depression. Some people use it to manage anxiety, ADHD, menopause, OCD, and PMS or PMDD. So in this video, I'm going to talk about whether there's enough clinical evidence to support that St. John's wort is effective in all of these categories. I'm also going to talk about safety considerations such as potential side effects and medication interactions. It's really important to note that St. John's wort specifically can interact dangerously, sometimes in a life-threatening fashion with a wide range of medications. So I'm going to delve into into why St. John's wort in particular among all supplements can so strongly and sometimes dangerously interact with so many medications. Near the end of the video, I'm going to provide a list of several high quality brands that have undergone rigorous testing for safety and quality. This is really important because in the past, third-party testing of St. John's wort supplements have found significant issues with quality and also safety. Many of the tested products have been found to have high levels of toxic heavy metals. Other supplements have been found to have too little active ingredient, so less of the active ingredient than what was stated on the labels. I'm also going to talk about commonly used dosages based on the clinical trials. And then finally, I'm going to talk about my own experience with St. John's Wort and what brand I have used. All of that being said, let's talk about St. John's Wort. St. John's wort is made from the St. John's wort plant, which is known as Hypericum perforatum. You can identify the St. John's wort plant because of its yellow flowers. It has a rich history in traditional European medicine, which dates back all the way to the ancient Greek times. The plant's name is actually thought to be associated with St. John the Baptist because it typically blossoms around the time of the feast of St. John the Baptist in late June. There are several compounds within the St. John's wort plant that are thought to contribute to its effects, but the compounds that are thought to be most active and that are specifically tested for in quality and safety testing are hypericin and hyperforin. These active ingredients are the most concentrated in what's called the aerial parts of the plant. In other words, the parts of the plant that are above ground. So this means the flowers, the stems, and the leaves, but not the roots. St. John's wort is thought to increase levels of field good neurotransmitters in the brain. These include serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. Also, St. John's wort is thought to decrease GABA activity. GABA is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain, so it can make you feel calm. Uh, it can also make you feel overly sluggish if you are depressed. St. John's wort inhibits GABA, which may result in increased energy levels and improved mood in those with depression. But it's important to keep in mind that decreasing GABA's effects in the brain can also lead to increased anxiety in some people. Now let's talk about the clinical evidence. I'm going to start with depression because that is what St. John's wort is most commonly used for. The results of the trials are surprisingly positive for St. John's wort when it is used for depression. Let's delve into the details about this. The majority of double-blind placebo-controlled studies on St. John's wort show that it is just as effective as standard antidepressant medications, such as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, and tricyclic antidepressants, or TCAs. This is specifically for managing mild to moderate depression. But for severe major depression, for instance, depression that requires hospitalization, standard antidepressants are still thought to be more effective than St. John's wort. I found it really interesting that quite a few studies found that St. John's wort seemed to be better tolerated with fewer side effects compared to standardized antidepressants. But it's really important to, to keep in mind that you should not mix St. John's wort and standard antidepressant medications because this, is, this could actually be life-threatening. Combining these two medications at the same time 
can cause a life-threatening syndrome called serotonin syndrome. We're going to talk about serotonin syndrome in more detail later on in the video. So what is the clinical evidence for St. John's wort when it is used for anxiety? St. John's wort is thought to increase levels of serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine in the brain, which can potentially lead to an overall improved sense of well-being. Therefore, someone might experience decreased anxiety when using St. John's wort. However, because of its anti-GABA effects, it may actually worsen anxiety in some people because remember, GABA is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter, so it can make you feel calm. Uh, it can also make you feel overly sluggish if you are depressed. So when GABA is inhibited, that may lead to increased nervousness and anxiety. It may also lead, again, to Im improved energy in some people. It all depends on the individual. The clinical research on St. John's wort's effects on anxiety is minimal and scarce. I only found a couple of studies and their results are not robust. So I found a study performed in 2017 and this was performed on rats, not humans. And it showed that St. John's wort reversed anxiety and depression in rats and improved their response to stress. Uh, again, this was an animal study. There are many differences between rats and humans. And so I really don't take the results of this study that seriously. I found one small human study performed in 2019 on 48 people and found that taking St. John's wort helped people respond more positively to negative signals, which suggests an anti-anxiety effect. But another small human study found no reduction in anxiety in those taking St. John's wort. There's actually quite a bit of positive evidence supporting St. John's effectiveness in managing menopausal symptoms. The most commonly improved symptoms in these studies include hot flashes and psychological symptoms such as depression, but one study did also find improved sexual well-being and improved sleep. Premenstrual syndrome, or PMS, is characterized by emotional and physical symptoms that occur in the luteal phase, or the last half of the menstrual cycle after ovulation. Physical symptoms can include breast tenderness, abdominal cramps, bloating, headaches, fatigue, and nausea. Emotional symptoms of PMS can include mood swings, irritability, anxiety, and other changes in mood. Premenstrual dysphoric disorder, or PMDD, is associated with similar emotional and physical symptoms as PMS, but the symptoms are typically a lot more severe and can more significantly interfere with a person's life, relationships, and work. I found multiple studies that measured the effects of St. John's wort on premenstrual symptoms, and most of them were actually quite positive. Quite a few randomized control trials have found that St. John's wort significantly improves behavioral and physical symptoms associated with premenstrual symptoms. One study did find that while St. John's wort improved emotional lability, hostility, and anger, as well as impulsivity associated with PMS, it did not differ significantly from placebo in terms of its impact on depressive symptoms, anxiety, energy level, pain, and other physical symptoms. Also, one study found that St. John's wort decreased food cravings in women suffering from moderate to severe PMS. One of the standard medical therapies for PMDD is to use an SSRI, but some people just can't tolerate the side effects. Because of the mostly positive results of these studies, some health practitioners have proposed that St. John's wort might be a potential alternative to SSRIs for those suffering from PMDD and specifically for women who cannot tolerate SSRI's side effects. Okay, let's move on to obsessive compulsive disorder. The studies on St. John's wort's effects on OCD are mixed and scarce and not robust. I found a couple of studies, one small study performed in 2000, found that taking a specific St. John's wort supplement might improve OCD symptoms when compared to baseline, but the quality of the study was not very high because the study lacked a control group, uh, which means that they were not compared to a group that was taking placebo. I found one more small, higher quality study that found that St. John's wort does not improve symptoms in people with OCD compared to placebo. Somatoform disorder is a condition where 
people experience significant physical symptoms that can't fully be explained by another medical condition. For instance, a lot of people with this disorder have gastrointestinal disturbances such as abdominal pain or significant diarrhea or nausea, vomiting, pain in various regions of the body, various neurological symptoms, which can lead to significant impairment in someone's daily life. St. John's wort has been found to be effective for somatoform symptoms in two clinical trials that were performed in patients with this disorder. And they found that taking St. John's wort extract reduced symptoms of somatoform disorder by up to 45% after six weeks of treatment when compared to a placebo. With regard to attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD, the data on this is not robust, it's scarce. I found one small clinical study in children with ADHD and this found that taking St. John's wort does not improve symptoms when compared to placebo. So my takeaway from my review of the scientific literature is that St. John's wort is likely effective for depression and possibly effective for menopausal symptoms, premenstrual syndrome and PMDD, as well as somatoform disorder. There is insufficient clinical evidence to support that it works for anxiety, OCD, or ADHD due to mixed study results and a lack of abundant research in these areas. Let's talk about safety of St. John's wort. This is a very important part of the video because if it's not used safely, St. John's wort can be dangerous, okay? That being said, St. John's wort is generally safe when it's taken appropriately. It may cause the following symptoms listed on this slide. I'm not going to list all of these, you could read them for yourself, but it is important to keep in mind that it can cause manic episodes in people with bipolar disorder and psychosis in people with schizophrenia. Now, here is the important part of this video that I really want you guys to pay attention to. Combining St. John's wort with certain antidepressants, specifically SSRIs, TCAs, and MAOIs, or monoamine oxidase inhibitors, combining it with some anti-migraine drugs, as well as a pain medication called tramadol, combining St. John's wort with any of these medications can result in a potentially life-threatening elevation of serotonin. This is called serotonin syndrome. Symptoms of serotonin syndrome include severe confusion and agitation, diarrhea, rapid heartbeat, high blood pressure, hallucinations, and increased body temperature. Another major risk associated with St. John's wort involves potential interactions with a variety of other medications. This is because both St. John's wort and many different medications used in our Western world use a specific liver enzyme for their metabolism. This enzyme is called CYP450. The CYP450 system breaks down many different medications. St. John's wort increases the activity of CYP450 and therefore can speed up the breakdown of medications, which subsequently reduces their levels in the blood and decreases their effectiveness. This interaction might occur with as many as half of the medications that are used today. So this slide lists the most worrisome and dangerous interactions between St. John's wort and medications, but because so many medications are processed by the CYP450 liver enzyme, it's highly probable that if you're on a medication, that medication does interact with St. John's wort and St. John's wort can potentially decrease the effectiveness of that medication. So speak with your doctor, uh, check for interactions before starting St. John's wort. Let's address some quality concerns about the many St. John's wort brands available on the market. Some studies in the past have found worrisome findings about many St. John's wort supplement brands. The specific issues that have been found have been, number one, several of them tested have been contaminated with heavy metals. The most commonly found heavy metals in St. John's wort include cadmium, which is a carcinogen or cancer-causing agent, and a kidney toxin. Lead has also been found. Lead is neurotoxic. Arsenic has also been found in some brands, and that can cause a variety of neurological, gastrointestinal, and cardiovascular symptoms. In the past, third-party testing has found that multiple St. John's wort brands have exceeded safety limits for these heavy metals. 
Another concern is that many of the brands tested have had inaccurate dosage. Some St. John's Wort products have been found to contain lower levels of active ingredients than stated on the label. So this is why it's important to select a brand that has been rigorously tested by third-party companies and or a brand that uses methods that strictly adhere to good manufacturing practice standards or the standards that are recommended by the United States Pharmacopeia. When looking at brands, also make sure that you look at the label and see whether the product is an extract or a whole herb. Most of the St. John's wort preparations in the clinical trials have used an extract rather than the whole herb. So if you want to adhere more to what was used in the clinical trials, then definitely use an extract. Extracts also generally have a higher concentration of active ingredient and are also less likely to be contaminated with heavy metals because the extraction process actually takes out a lot of the heavy metals. Also, the label should clearly state what part of the plant is used. So you need to find a supplement that uses the aerial parts of the plant. That means the flowers, the stem, the leaves, not the roots though. This is because the aerial parts of the plant have the highest concentration of active ingredient. With regards to dosage, clinical trials have found that an effective dose is typically 900 milligrams per day. Typically this is split up as 300 milligrams taken three times a day. The clinical trials specifically use a St. John's supplement extract that is standardized to at least 0.3% hypericin and or 1-3% to hyperferrin. Here is a list of high quality brands that have passed quality and safety testing. Keep in mind that this is not an extensive list, that there may be other brands out there that are high quality. These are simply the brands that I have found on my research based on the sites and testing that I use. I do have personal experience with St. John's Wort. I actually recently started taking it in the fall because I've struggled with low mood and increased mental and physical sluggishness as the weather has gotten colder and as the days have gotten darker earlier. These mood changes are fairly typical for me each fall and winter, and uh, I am highly convinced that I probably have some degree of seasonal affective disorder. After beginning St. John's Wort this year, I almost immediately felt increased energy and positive mood, although based on the clinical trials, it does appear that for most people, it takes several weeks for St. John's Wort to achieve an antidepressant effect. So. I don't know, perhaps there is some component of placebo with me. I currently take Standard Process MediHerb St. John's Wort. If you decide to purchase Standard Process specifically, be sure to purchase it through the manufacturer's website rather than Amazon because I actually looked closely at the Standard Process that's sold on Amazon and as of December of 2023, it seems like these products are actually expired. Thank you guys for watching my videos. Please let me know if you found it helpful by by liking, subscribing, leaving a comment. I truly value your feedback because this helps me to continue to produce high quality content for you. Also, feel free to buy me a coffee if you'd like to give extra love and support to my channel. The link is going to be in the description box below. Have a wonderful day and we'll catch you next time. Bye.